Hi, welcome and thank you for joining us here at St. Charles Borromeo Catholic Church to celebrate the love which God has for us in this weekday live stream Mass in Ordinary Time. I am Father Kwame, the presiding celebrant. The theme for our Masses in Ordinary Time is My Soul is Thirsting for Renewal. May the Eucharist strengthen us to experience the divine healing and renewal out of the afflictions of COVID-19, our political problems, social injustice, and emotional distress. Let us now worship. Good morning. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from the nations to give thanks to your holy name and make it our glory to praise you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, Today is Monday in the fourth week of Ordinary Time. We will hear Jesus introduced to us as the one who has the power to drive out all demons, all evil in the world, to just make things right in our world. We have this opportunity once again to be nourished, to be fed with the Word of God, and then also to be nourished with the Eucharist spiritually to strengthen us to be people of peace, people who bring change into our world, just like Jesus did, to change the world and make the world good. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass and have this encounter with Jesus, let us call to mind our sins so to be ready for Jesus' Help. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant us that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, what more shall I say? I have not time to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, did what was righteous, obtained the promises. They closed the mouths of lion, put out raging fires, escaped the devouring sword. Out of weakness they were made powerful, became strong in battle, and turned back foreign invaders. Women received back their dead through resurrection. Some were tortured and would not accept deliverance in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others endured mockery, scourging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, sawed in two, 
put to death at sword's point. They went about in skins of sheep or goats, needy, afflicted, tormented. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered about in deserts and on mountains, in caves and in crevices in the earth. Yet all these, though approved because of their faith, did not receive what had been promised. God had foreseen something better for us, so that without us they should not be made perfect. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, O Lord, which you have in store for those who fear you, and which, toward those who take refuge in you, you show in the sight of the children of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. You screen them within your abode from the strife of tongues. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, whose wondrous mercy he has shown me in a fortified city. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Once I said in my anguish, I am cut off from your sight, yet you heard the sound of my pleading when I cried out to you. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you faithful ones, the Lord keeps those who are constant, but more than requites those who act proudly. Your hearts take comfort. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst, and God has visited God's people. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs, who had an unclean spirit, met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of the man. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding on the hillside, and they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine. Let us enter them. And he led them, 
and the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about 2,000 rushed down a steep bank into the sea, where they were all drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident on, in the town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there clothed and in his right mind. And they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him. But Jesus will not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. The man went off and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him. And all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have a powerful story of healing today, and we thank God that one of our lay presiders is here to break open God's word to us. Let us pay attention. Let us listen with our mind and with our hearts. In today's gospel reading, Mark tells us that Jesus is expanding his mission into Gentile territory, the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee, Gerasene territory. The Jews had a very low opinion of pagans. They were possessed by demons, lived in dirty, rough places like caves and among tombs. They weren't much better than pigs. The man with the unclean spirit rushing toward Jesus is described as being violent, strong, and uncontrollable. It was a very scary picture. picture. Jesus was not a Jewish supremacist or nationalist. God's salvation was for everyone, even the lowly Gentiles. He calmed the man and confronted the unclean spirits possessing him. He drove them out of the demoniac and letting them go and let them go into 2,000 pigs who ran into the sea and drowned. I have to a little, give you a little anecdote here. I was looking online for commentary on this passage of Mark, and I came across a site where a preacher was accounting how he had, was talking about this passage in Mark to a group in the middle of Iowa who were hog farmers. All the men had overalls on as they were talking about this passage. This was a Catholic parish in the middle of Iowa. Anyway, the man <laughs> in overalls said, as they were talk after they had read this passage, uh, he said, everyone in this town is a hog farmer. And I don't know if you know this, but hogs can swim. <laughs> and then a woman, a wife of one of the farmers said, yes, those people should be mad because their pigs are dead, not afraid because a demon was, has disappeared. Anyway, Mark, of course, was not concerned with the accuracies of, of pigs, but he was showing us that Jesus' miraculous healing of this Gerasene demoniac was a sign of the saving power of faith in him and in God, and that this salvation was really available to everyone, especially to the marginalized, like this, this man was marginalized and separated and ostracized from the rest of the community. When the townspeople came and saw the man sitting calmly, 
and in his right mind, they were suspicious and actually afraid. Is it fear of losing status, wealth, and control that keeps us and our institutions, including our church, from totally committing to transforming society and ending the inequities that separate us? The cured man wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus basically made him an apostle, asking him to go home and proclaim how much the Lord had done for him. He wasn't afraid. He had experienced salvation. So today, let us reflect on this passage and, and how we treat people from a different race, culture, religion, or political persuasion. How can we be more welcoming toward them, more like Jesus? Can we make an effort to learn about another culture or religion? Can we encourage the church to admit its part in marginalizing other races and religions and to ask forgiveness and reconciliation? Can we encourage policies and laws that seek to eliminate the causes of inequities? Let us be grateful for our faith in Jesus and proclaim how much the Lord has done for us. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, Jesus taught the disciples to pray often and without ceasing. He also taught them to pray in his name. We do so now in faith. For the many in our harsh world who are suffering from discrimination, treated as outcasts, are nowhere welcome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may never see compassion as weakness or something to hide or something to be embarrassed about, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have requested prayers through the bulletin or the prayer circle, for all those suffering with COVID and for their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear us, O loving Father. We call out to you in the name and the power of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, the work of our hands. It will become our spiritual food. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of our hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. We please to the sacrifice we offer you. Humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away iniquity and cleanse us of our sins. My dear friends, let us continue to pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's offering and our prayers, O Lord, find favor with you that it may restore all of us to holiness and obtain what we devoutly ask of you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your yes. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is this right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving all of us a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross he brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all those who obey him, he has become the source of eternal redemption. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O Lord, you are indeed holy, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. O Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity and justice together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and all leaders of the world. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now pray as Jesus has taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our times, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the and the glory, glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your followers, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Sisters and brothers, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to share in this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the spiritual prayer of communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you suffered, died, and rose from death to save us. I believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making me a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in me your sacrificial presence and let me be united with you at this moment so that in all my thoughts, words, and actions, I may represent you and love others as you love me. Amen. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love, O Lord. Let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us pray. Nourished with these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, True faith may ever increase in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. <laughs>